Hey you guys, welcome back to the channel Physics Surgery and here we are in AITS Select Series and this is a follow-up video to already done cavities and conductor problem uh, in the resolved series. So, and also we have done one pathfinder question on this. So at the end of those two videos, I have given some practice problems. So here are the practice problem solutions for that. And also you want to see the original videos, the links of the original video is in the description below. Please do watch uh, this particular video till the end, because I'm going to give you two more practice problems, which are very, very important for the JE advance and also the IOQ in February. Okay, so let's move ahead and see the Formal wording in case you are new to this channel. So this was the first question I gave at that point of time. It was a passage question where information is given here and a three simple basic conceptual questions were asked. OK, so let's go through. There is a cubical cavity inside a conducting sphere of radius R and a positive charge Q is placed at the center of the cubical cavity and another positive charge Q is placed at a distance L outside the sphere at a distance L, right? So greater than R from the center of the sphere. The sphere is Earth as shown in figure. OK, so first question is about charge induced on the inner surface of the cavity. Then the second question is net charge on the outer surface of the conducting sphere. And the third one is about the sign of potential at a point inside the cavity. Is it zero, positive or negative? Or maybe from the information, you cannot determine it. OK, so this was the first question. This is the second question, which we'll come back to once we solve the first one. OK, so in case you want to solve these two questions on your own, pause the video here, try to go through it and uh, give it a try for five to 10 minutes and do come back for the solution explanation. OK, so uh, one of the points that we'll be using for this uh, first question, the passage uh, wherein uh, we have already discussed that the charge on the outer surface in such a scenario, which is a grounded situation, will not depend on the position or the shape of the cavity or the charges inside it. OK, so this particular position of the charge and the shape of this cavity, all those things are going to be an internal business, because if you take a Gaussian surface here, can you see a small Gaussian surface on the right side? That Gaussian surface is going to enclose zero charge because the field is going to be zero. Okay. Okay, right. So with this uh, charge outside, you should be able to decide that the value of the potential of the sphere is supposed to be zero. And for that, the outer surface charges would be independent of whatever is happening inside. Okay, so this has been discussed in the past video. So the link of that particular video is in the description below and also in the I button above. Okay, right. So for the potential of the sphere to be equal to zero, Right. Once you have ascertained that inside business is not going to decide the outside charges, you can directly write the potential contributed at the center by this Q is K into Q by L. And for outer surface, assume that outside charges are some non-uniform charges of Q naught, then KQ by R. So some of these two potentials at the center and therefore of the entire sphere should be equal to zero. So when you rearrange, you end up getting the outside charge is minus R Q by L independent of this capital Q. Also, when you take the points inside the cavity, you take uh, this inside cavity surface should have exactly minus Q charge because the Gaussian surface encloses zero charge, right? So the field lines, if I have enlarged this diagram here, if field lines start from positive charge and end on the surface of the cavity in a normal manner. So they'll curve at everywhere and then they end in a normal manner. We already have seen that this outside conductor is of zero potential because of grounding. So this end entire material part of it is at zero potential, including the surface of the cavity, the inner surface of the cavity. So which I have written as zero potential here. So if you do have field lines uh, in uh, ending on that zero potential, you travel along that field line in the reverse direction, then your potential will be positive. This reason is very simple. The electrostatic field lines always move from higher potential to lower potential. So when you are already having a zero potential here, any point inside where the field line ends at that zero potential should be having a positive charge. OK, sorry, positive potential. So going back to that particular question, we should be able to answer this very clearly. Uh, the inner surface of the cavity should be minus Q and it should be a non-uniformly distributed one because uniform distribution only happens in the case of a um, spherical cavity. Uh, the net charge on the outer surface of the conducting sphere we already decided is equal to this one. And the potential at a point inside the cavity is always going to be in this problem positive. Okay, so these are the simple conceptual 
questions for the first passage. Okay, this is the second one. I want to give it a try again now that you have got the explanation for the first one. Please do it and then do come back. Okay, so here's the formal wording. A conducting sphere of radius B has a spherical cavity with its center displaced by A from the center of the sphere. So the cavity is center to this center, the distance is A. A point charge Q is placed at the center of the cavity O2. Okay, and capital Q charge is given to the conducting sphere that is this one and charge Q naught is placed outside at a distance C from the center of the original conductor. Okay, so all this diagram and the distances and these charges are explained very clearly and all these points P, O1 and O2 are going to be collinear. Okay, so with this information, which of the following options is correct. Charge distribution on the inner surface of the cavity is uniform, right? Um, potential of the conductor given. Remember, uh, in the previous problem, we had earthing. Here, there's no earthing. So he's expecting the potential to be non-zero here, and he's testing whether it is this. The charge distribution of the outer surface of the conducting sphere is non-uniform. So you have to decide whether this outer surface distribution is non-uniform or not. The intensity of electric field at the point O1 is given by this number. Okay, right. So these are the things that you are supposed to justify. So I hope you are ready for the solution. So here we are. So in the question two, what we are going to do is uh, you realize that uh, point charge is placed at the center of a uh, hollow uniform sphere, right? So in that scenario, like this has plus Q, these minus Qs would be non-uniform and uh, sorry, minus Qs would be uniform and it would be distributed here, right? Because again, if I had taken a Gaussian surface like this, then the net charge should be zero. And because the field lines start radially and hit because of symmetry, uh, spherical symmetry, you could say, this minus Q is going to be in this problem, a uniform one. And already you gave a capital Q charge to this conductor. And because of this minus Q, the net red colored should be a neutral one. So the plus Q will start uh, getting induced on the outer surface. So total charge on the outer surface is capital Q plus Q. It would have been a uniform one had it not been for the presence of this Q naught. This presence of Q naught distorts these charges. Therefore, this capital Q plus small Q is going to be a non-uniform distribution. That's what is written here. On the inner surface of cavity, minus Q would be uniform. And on the outer surface, Q plus Q charge will be non-uniform due to the presence of Q naught. Okay, so this is all considered to be conditions of electrostatic shielding. And that's what I'm trying to justify. The video has been done on electrostatic shielding on different conditions of electrostatic shielding condition from inside and from outside in the past. So the link of that video is in the description below. So please do watch that one. So V sphere is equal to V O1. Always for any spherical surfaces or spherical material, the best place to calculate the potential is the center. And you can claim that this potential is same as potential of everything in the material. So V O1 will not be contributed by these two charges, right? So this one contributes some number, whereas this minus Q exactly cancels that number, right? Again, the electrostatic shielding condition. So the only contributors of potential would be capital Q plus small Q and this Q naught. So this is going to be K into charge by this distance and Q naught divided by this distance. So this is the value of the potential. And charges inside cavity uh, don't contribute when taken together uh, to this point V01, as I already said. And also in any, in any material uh, of a conductor, the electrostatic condition, the field has to be zero. So these are the discussions about the different options here. So the required answer would be A and B and charge distribution on the outer surface is non-uniform, whereas the field in the O1 point is going to be zero. So I hope you are awaiting the practice questions. So here's the practice question on, again, conductors and cavities. So this is a match day following. It's going to be discussed in the next video of the AITS Select series. Uh, the conductors, cavities, electrostatic shielding concepts are of utmost importance when it comes to your uh, Indian Olympiads and also the JE Advanced and Main syllabus. Okay, so please make sure you do give it a fair try of five to six minutes and do comment your answer below and I'll come up with a solution very quickly. So this is a pro practice problem number one and practice problem number two. Okay, where you will be uh, discussing 
uh, more intricate details of the electrostatic shielding conditions. Okay, right. Just do comment the answers of these questions below. More than one matching can be possible. So, okay, right. So, if you in case like this uh, video, please do check out the rest of the AITS Select series videos. I think more than 20 AITS Select videos have been produced by now. And also, there are some other series which are running parallelly in this channel, like Pathfinder Solution series and Olympiad workout series where again more than 20 videos on different uh, stages of Olympiads of different countries have been discussed some select questions I'll be bringing up more questions on these series uh, as we near the Olympiads and also result series where the toppers doubts are usually uh, discussed okay so links of all these playlists are in the description below please do uh, enjoy them and uh, please do like this video liked videos uh, get recommended by the youtube algorithm to more people and hence uh, more subscriptions to my channel and i'll be motivated to bring you more quality content in a regular and consistent manner please do share this video with uh, um, relevant whatsapp and telegram study groups that you are part of and please do encourage your friends to comment subscribe and check out my channel and in case you're new to this channel i do recommend that you per day watch somewhere around three to four videos in the chronological order of their uploading so that you are uh, in grips with the uh, quality that has been already uh, given out on this channel so uh, every video that i do produce there is some inherent uh, depth to the understanding of that particular topic especially required for j aspirants um, and it's definitely going to be worth your time okay so uh, i hope you do enjoy that playlist and thank you for staying with me this long and see you in the next video